So we have Frank Ski, we have Nina Brown from the new The Frank Ski Show with Nina Brown. First of all, I'm very excited for both of you. How you doing today? Hey, go. We're good, bro. Good to talk to you, man. How you been? Man, I've been great. I've been great. And uh, Frank, we're going to start with you real quick. When the uh, you made the announcement that you were leaving V103 in Atlanta, you know, it, you know, I was like, OK, <laughs> I was like, whenever I see anybody say it's a God move or anything like that, I'm like, man, they done pushed Frank out, you know, <laughs> but but, right. but I was like, that doesn't make any sense because your numbers were great and we're in the middle of a heated political season. Yeah. And if there's anything I know, Frank, know Frank, he knows how to do is politics. <laughs> and, 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 and contacts and all that stuff, sir. So what happened? What, what, where did the decision come for you to say, I am leaving V103? Well, I, you know, we had kind of decided um, that we were going to make a move toward the uh, end of the year. Um, and then in the beginning of the year, obviously, with COVID kicking in, um, I really felt a huge responsibility to stay on to make sure that I could help the community get through what was going on with the COVID situation. I thought it was very important. I, I, I really consider my job a job of giving people inspiration and information. And I could not just leave without that being done. Uh, and we finally got to a place where I felt like um, I had empowered our community um, to be able to move forward. And, and then we had, um, of course, uh, all the race issues coming across the country. And that became big, and then that was just another, you know, reason I had to stay on again, um, just to make sure that we got through that really tough period because it was really tough in Atlanta at the time. Um, and then as things kind of settled a bit on both of those fronts, I felt it was time to go ahead and make that move. Now, Nina, when it came to this uh, situation as well, uh, because in, in the in the radio industry we saw a lot of people get cut. A lot of people get let go. You got let go right. in the middle of that, I believe, in April. Um, when Correct. when that happened, did you already kind of know what was going on with, with Frank and what he was trying to do? And so did that give you some kind of ease? Or when did you know, you know, this is a go, we're about to do this kind of situation? No, I didn't know anything. Um, when I got laid off, I was taken by surprise. Of course, I was, you know, I was, I was, the rug had been pulled underneath my feet and I didn't really know what the situation was going to evolve into or what I was even going to do on a personal level. Um, you know, I have a almost 20 year work relationship with Frank. So when Frank says I'm working on some stuff, then Nina says, OK, um, I don't really have to ask too many questions. So um, when Frank called me and told me uh, eventually, you know, that things were a go, I was all on board. But, you know, at one point during this layoff period, I was seriously considering going into real estate. Like I really had not decided if I was going to stay in radio or um, or do something else. So I was really just kind of taking a break and figuring it out and, you know, just letting God figure it out for me, really, just going with the flow. I was winging you know, it. No, I can agree with you because I know we had conversations about this with, and texting back and forth. When I was, when I saw, you know, with Nina Brown, I'm like, I could have sworn she was about to go into real estate and grow flowers and stuff. I don't know <laughs> where this old with Nina Brown came from. And so when, when, when that decision came, because I guess, like you said, you were in your mindset, I'm, I'm about to make a split, I'm done with radio. For the time being and your brain had to come back and it wasn't just producer as you've been a great producer for years it's as co-host hold that thought frank nina brown co-host when did that decision like when did you think you know let's go ahead and make nina not just my ep but my my co-host you know nina has always um for years has always interjected into our conversations. I think she gives a great balance and intellect to a lot of the conversations, and she relates really well um, with women in the demo. Um, the one thing I always look for when I look for talent is somebody that not only relates to the demo, but somebody that the demo says, I really would like to hang out with them. Like, I wanna go have a glass of wine with Nino or go have a bourbon and cigar and sit down with Frank. That's my goal. And Nina has always had that. Um, when the opportunity came this time around, it was very funny because when I was at V um, and I had lost my other two co-hosts at the time and was flying solo for a while, um, it was very interesting. I had a conversation um, with Ryan Cameron and Ryan Cameron said, you know, why don't you just stop playing? You know, Nina needs to be your co-host. And I said, 
I said, yeah. I said, I've always thought about that. But, you know, the management, you know, really wanted to keep everybody in our own lanes. So Nina was the producer at the time, so she could not be on the air. I've always felt that she could. But, you know, certain people want, you know, certain management teams want everybody to stay in their lane. So things stay kind of organized. And I understood that. So we never really pushed that envelope. But when this opportunity came up, um, I thought it was a great opportunity uh, to do that. I think I've always felt that um, my job is to be a host, but also make stars out of everybody else on the show. And Nina is a star. She, she really is. And I've always told her that. And I, I just think the sky is the limit from this point. And I'm yeah. just so happy that, you know, we got to make this choice. Right. And Nina, uh, I, we talked, you know, before we got started, you know, I said, you know, co-host of the Frank D show. And for you, you said it's going to take me a minute to get used to seeing that because you're so used to seeing EP. Yeah. For, for this position to, for you to be in, to be an on-air personality, what does that mean to you, you know, uh, when it comes to, was this something that you wanted to do while you were at V and you didn't get an opportunity to do it? So what does this mean for you right now? Well, you know, in every situation um, that Frank and I have been in, I understand radio. Frank taught me actual radio, real radio. I learned from someone who learned real radio. Um, so I've understood that, you know, what it takes to make good radio. I simply want to make good radio. So when I would be in the studio and we would be having these um, heated conversations or we would be on air and I could, I knew something was missing and I could, I could point it out. I'm like, man, they're missing this one point. Or we would be in the middle of doing an interview. And as a female, I would say, I, there's one thing that we're missing from the female perspective and it would eat me up. And I would always tell Frank, you know, once we would go to break or, you know, the show would be over and I would say, you know what, Frank, you did a great job, but I just wish, you know, from a female's perspective, this is what was covered or, you know, we'd be in break and I'd say, Hey, we need to cover this. Like, you know, this is big to people, um, to women who are listening. So it wasn't really a matter of having to be on air. I'm not one that craves the, 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 you know, the shine. I just want to make radio and Frank and I have always done that. Um, and if I can help do that, then I want to help. There might be a time when, you know, we need to add to our show. I'm okay with that. I really want to make good radio and I want good ratings and I want people to, when they reach out and they say, you know what? I felt that I connected. Thank you for doing that. Then I feel like I've done my job. So Frank speaking on that. Um, What's it going to be like with Nina still being the executive producer? And this is not this is anything new in, in the industry, having an executive producer being on air as well. But for you, this this might be something a little new for you and for both of you, being an executive producer and being an on air talent at the same time. What is, what do you what are your expectations from Nina in, in that perspective? Um, there's very few people that I think can really do it effectively. Having known Nina for so long, I've put her in several different situations. When when Nina and I first met, she actually <clears throat> worked for my kids' foundation. And she was a volunteer for the Frank Ski Kids Foundation. And then she became uh, an employee of the Frank Ski Kids Foundation and worked out of my office. Then she was an intern at the radio station. And then I pulled her in and she became an intern for the morning show. And then she became an assistant producer for the morning show. And then she became the executive producer of the morning show. But all of those times, she never forgot what her role was and has always been hyper focused on making sure the most important thing is making sure that the show, i.e. Frank Ski, is looking right. And I know Nina's main job is to make sure that I look and sound right. Now, once that is in there, then she the other the other stuff is easy. The other stuff is she's just a natural person. So having natural personality and charisma and charm is just her thing anyway. So she is super hyper focused and understands what the business is. And I think so many times um, radio DJs in these times, they don't actually know what the business of radio is. They know how to get on the air and entertain, but they don't understand the business side. And now more than ever, the business of radio is vitally important. Frank, what is it about WHUR? Because it feels like you have two homes. You have WHUR and you have V103 in Atlanta. What is it about WHUR that keeps on bringing you back? 
<clears throat> when I started, um, I, I started college in Washington, and WHUR was this like bohemoth brand in Washington. And I, I would remember um, all the shows that were on all the way down to Melvin Lindsay, who created the term The Quiet Storm. And, and at the time, even though I did not attend Howard, I was at Howard daily. I slept at Howard all the time. So to this day, everybody thinks I'm a Howard alumni. Um, and I received that because I was there so much. Um, so it was very important to me in my heart. And um, right around 2013, when I first left V103, not knowing what I wanted to do, but I knew that there was something else I should be doing, um, we got a call. And the call was, can you sit in on the show for a week? That was the call. And I said, you know, absolutely. So Nina and I flew to DC with no expectation and we that. sat in yeah. for a week. And while we were on the week, it wasn't until about Thursday that we found out that they were actually holding a contest for the person that would take the job. Now that's not why I went there. I just sat in for a week after that. Um, we got offered a job and we had to kind of like group and, you know, just like hustle and get all the paperwork done and whatnot. And we went there and it felt, dude, let me just say this. It's really hard in a lot of corporate environments for radio stations to feel genuine because of the climate of radio and budgets and money and consolidation and your program director is programming five stations your general manager is, is general managing x amount of stations you're just one person in a huge behemoth of things going on around and it's hard to feel organic and i'm an old school radio person and whur has that rare uniqueness that it is family for real for real it is when I say family, it's not like, oh, just because you see everybody every day and every now and then you go to lunch. No, them people over there are like family. A lot of them people been there for years, like 10, 20 years. The people just, when you get to HUR, that's not a job you leave because it's so much like family and they're so competitive. Um, but they just have a commitment because they're part of the university. They have a commitment to the community. And their commitment for the community has shown that they're one of the only mainstream stations in America that still has a news program that is totally talk show in the middle of a music station that comes on at 7 p.m. called The Daily Drum, where they go through all the issues of the day. So it's really organic, and it gives you that mom-and-pop feeling, although it's a big, huge corporate entity. And that's what got me coming back. And let's talk about the business right now with us being in the middle of a, a pandemic. Most of us are at home, you know, doing our shows from home, producing from home. What has that been like for you? I've, I've actually talked to a few people. They're saying they are actually cool not going back to the studio. How do y'all feel about and, and I know with the switch right now makes it a whole lot easier with you guys not having to move to D.C. right now. You know what I'm saying? So what, what's it like right now doing radio in, inside of a within a pandemic? Let, let, let me just say this. Black radio is just catching up. White radio been doing this. You know, some of the biggest <laughs> shows in the country, when you talk about Rush Limbaugh and all these right-wing radio shows, they've been doing the shows from their house. Um, and when I brought that up to the radio station a long time ago, you know, the answer was always absolutely not. You got to be in studio. You got to be here. You got you to gotta feel it. You got to... And I'm like, this is modern, like the whole world is moving away from that. The whole world is moving to people doing things in their house, even before the pandemic. So before the pandemic, there were huge podcast shows that were making millions and millions of dollars. Before the pandemic, there were celebrities doing shows from their house. Before the pandemic, there was Red Table Talk with Jada Pinkett Smith before the pandemic. So all of this was already in place. Black radio just had to catch up and they were forced to catch up real fast. And let me tell you what it proved. What it proved is it's never going back because now they've realized 
why do we have 30 salespeople in the building that could be working from home and we're paying all this money for real estate for people just to come in and sit down and work on their compu computer to put orders in, but most of the time they're in the street. Why do we have a huge section of our building that is not being used, but we're paying huge amounts of money on corporate rent? So you're never going to see it go back. And before the pandemic happened, you already had companies downsizing um, like, you know, iHearts and, and whatnot and, and um, Cumulus that were already going through their downsizing situation. So this has been an event that was already happening. It just so happened for me that, you know, God put something in my heart to build the studio. And I thought it was because I got new music coming out and I'm going to do some music. And during this pandemic, I got to go back to my music roots and blah, blah, blah. But then when the pandemic hit, I had a studio already. And all I needed was to go to the radio station and pick up a Zephyr and plug it in. And I was there. And Nina, for you too, um, being a producer, us both being producers, I know in the beginning it was kind of sketchy. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't know if I like this so much, but now I've gotten kind of used to producing a show, you know, booking, like you said, and being on the phone and emails and all that stuff, and then running a show from behind the scenes, but, you know, collectively trying to work it out. As a producer of a radio show, you know, that part, what's it been like for you uh, during this pandemic while you were running uh, Francis Morning Show at VM103? Uh, I loved it. <laughs> I loved it from day one. Um, I am a person of efficiency. I am very meticulous about like, you know, making sure things are run efficiently. Um, and there wasn't like a lot of lost time from just people, you know, radio stations are very social. So you people come by the office, they want to talk like I just felt like I can get so much more done. So I loved it. Um, I hadn't really thought about like the way that, you know, we're doing all interviews virtually now, but I think it's really dope that it required people to figure out a new way to do it. And that new way is working. And I really feel like we have access to more people yes, now we because do. whereas before the pandemic, I mean, to do a phoner with an A-list was like, well, we got to have him in studio. We have to have him in studio. And now it's like, oh, they can call in. We can, you know, do the video conference. We can do it on, you know, live. Perfect. And now it's accepted. I would love to, you know, just kind of go back just, you know, a little bit when you guys came back together um, at V103. When you guys came back together and to do, um, you know, the the uh, the, the show with uh, JR and Jade, what was that like just kind of creating? Because, you know, like Frank, what you said earlier is creating talent and making other people superstars. What was that like for you, you know, coming back and, and doing that? What did you learn from that situation? Um, it was, it was a difficult situation because, um, you know, I, I had been with Wanda and we had had our ratings had been going up really good, which is the reason why I went back. And then when Wanda was no longer there, um, it was brought to me to bring in Jade and JR. And it was kind of like, this is what we want to do. Can you do it? Um, and I kind of felt like, okay, if, if I don't do it, then they're going to find somebody else to do it because this is the idea that they wanted to go with. Um, I think that, that Jade and JR are special, um, uh, personalities. Um, there's nobody that can do the things that Jade Nova does. Uh, she's an exceptional talent, um, like exceptional, like one of the best female vocalists I've ever heard in my life. Um, JR is just a walking sports computer. He has a digital mind that can remember stats and people and events and games and times and mind. He's just, he's just a special human being. Um, it was difficult for them to, um, get into the groove of what a morning show was. You know, it's, it's different, you know, as an artist and I've, been on that side of the world artists are not used to getting up at four o'clock in the morning that's not mm -hmm. what artists do because they don't get creative until at night you know when when it gets dark <laughs> right so that was difficult um to make that shift um and then ultimately she decided that the music was her first love as it sh as it was and and that was quite okay um jr is now hosting CBS Sports Network nationally syndicated right. um, every night. And they're doing their passion and doing their love. 
Um, this is a difficult thing to do, and it's all about timing and situation. If the timing is right and the situation is right, you can produce great things. Um, and you can ask any radio announcer um, who's ever been at the top of their game, and they will tell you that there were times that they had jobs that it just didn't fit and it just didn't work. Not that they weren't right. It's just the fit wasn't right. Um, so my challenge was I wasn't going to do it unless they brought back Nina. Um, and that's when Nina came back to join the show. Um, it was at that time because I felt like I needed somebody who was going to be super about helping produce a show with people that had never done a morning show. And that was a very difficult position to be in. Yes. And Nina, I want to talk to you about that. When it comes to putting together a show, um, you're doing it again right now. But when you have to come in, and like I said, I remember when you got brought back and I'm like, that is a difficult task. Thank God that she, you and Frank had the relationship that you have, you know, to, to do that. But to ask someone to come in, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> off the sidelines and say, hey, put the show together, you know, produce it, you know, get two people who've never done uh, morning radio before. You got it. Go ahead and do it. What was that like for you uh, putting together that show when it came to those dynamics? Uh, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. And it was the hardest seven months I've ever had, to be honest with you. Um, I agree with what Frank is saying. I will say um, the difference between Jade and Jared, like Frank said, is Jade is an artist. So like Frank said, that is her first love. And it was just a different, she wasn't used, Jade is a furry spirit. She really truly is. And that is what makes her so unique and so loved is that she's just free. So it's hard to tell someone who's a free spirit to be super structured. We, you know, and, and radio is structured, especially live radio. Um, and at V103, it's even more structured because, you know, it's, top ratings, it's a huge market, because JR has such a special place in my heart. JR did radio, but he did sports radio. And in black radio, okay, it's morning show, especially in mm -hmm. Atlanta, especially with Frank Ski, one of the main things that we have to be to get the Atlanta audience is transparent, right? That's what wins us. Frank and I have realized the more transparent we are, the more the listeners can relate, the more they love us. Um, and that's JR's that was JR's hardest thing. He came from sports. He never had to talk about his family, his relationship, his past relationships, his future desires, you know, all of that stuff. So the hardest thing with JR was we would say, JR, open up. We want to talk about your relationships. And he'd be like, nah, that's my <laughs> private business. I'm like, Morning show radio, um, as a talent and as a as me as a producer, him as talent. He was the easiest talent that I have ever worked with. He always showed up on time. He was always there. Every time we said, you know, we need we need everyone's input. He 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 banged it out with us. Like he would not leave until us producers were leaving. Um, he always had a consistent great attitude, even if he wasn't going to open up and be super transparent. Like he always had a great attitude. He was always so helpful. Jr. was that guy who when we would be driving to um, remotes that were an hour away and they knew that I fell asleep behind the wheel, JR said, I'm riding with Nina and I'm driving your car. Like, I'm not gonna have you, you know, asleep behind the wheel and something bad happened. That was JR. So when I tell you that I am so happy for him, I'm so proud of him, the person he is, he deserves everything that he's getting and he is truly in his element. And Jade is, when we saw Jade in the studio, um, she came back when she dropped her album, she just seemed happier. Her energy was very relaxed. Um, her and her husband, Devin, were in the studio. They were happy. We were happy to see her. She was happy to see us. And it made me just realize, like, that's truly, you know, what her first love is and what she needs to be doing. So I couldn't be happier for the both of them. And before I let you guys go, and I really appreciate the conversation, um, the Frank Ski Show with Nina Brown, what is the end goal, um, Frank? You know, I, I remember the last time you left V103, you know, it was really syndication. Syndication, I remember syndication being heavy in the conversation when it came to Frank Ski leaving V103. What is, the, what is the mindset now? Is syndication even a big deal anymore? Because it feels like anybody can be heard anywhere at any time now. Uh, so for Frank Ski, what is the goal with the Frank Ski show with Nina Brown? Um, number one is to get WHR. WHUR to number one, that's, that's my goal. Um, they're a great radio station. Um, 
They've got a void in the afternoons that I came to fill. They've got talent from top to bottom, starting with Steve Harvey. And they, they're they just going to be an incredible force in Washington. And I think Frank Ski and Nina Brown could take them to number one. Um, I still want to do other – I just want to see where the brand is going. Um, the I, just, You know, we got a lot of talent with our team. Um, we're doing some television and just – I just want to see where the talent goes. My, my interest – necessarily in syndication but um there is a part two to our announcement that we can't make yet um yeah so there is a part two let me just say that understood frank last question here man when you say you um when god says go you go and we hear that a lot what does that sound like to frank when frank hears god says go what is that is that an audible uh a voice that you hear is that a um gut feeling that you hear is it a sign that you see like Okay, I see what you're saying, God. You know, it's, it's time for me to make a move. What is that for Frank Ski? You know, um, I, I'm glad you asked that question. So l- let me explain it to people. So God, when, when, when you pray for something, God is going to give you your answer. But he will give you your answer through people, through confirmations. And when I was sitting back getting ready to make this move, I knew that um, – I was going to have to step down in a situation that it, it's kind of hard to step down when you're number one, right? You're number mm-hmm. one, you're winning. This is radio. And you're going to step down and go into a situation to help somebody else win when it's very comfortable to stay where you are. But I just felt like there was something I wasn't doing. There was something left to be done. And I started getting that feeling. And when my agent Gary Bernstein and I were talking and the, the, you know, the offers started coming in and the, the, the things, you know, um, were starting to change and it got time to move. You know, I couldn't do anything until I wasn't an employee of V103 anymore. Like you can't sign a contract with somebody else when you're working for somebody else. So right. there was a period of time where I was going to be unemployed. Now, as Nina, I just had a new baby. So, you know, um, yeah. in my 50s, I have a baby. And I got three kids in college. Nina has a baby and a kid in college. We're both recently married. And our spouses are looking at us like we're freaking crazy, right? So I'm going to step away and not have a job. And then have to wait, right, a few weeks. And then go back and hopefully the job is still there. In that time, right before I put in... um my notice to leave two days before I get a phone call and I got a phone call from a guy named Butch Anthony who owns a restaurant chain called this is it restaurants and they have about five locations they're very popular um, um, and he's very successful but he's very very religious matter of fact on his paychecks the paychecks to his employees says Jesus and Butch. So everything he does is with Jesus. So his bank account is Jesus and Butch. Okay, that's how religious this man is. And I have known him, oh man, almost 20 years, and he's never called my phone, ever. His son has called me. He has never called me. Usually I am calling him asking him to help with something for the foundation or something that I need. He has never picked, do when I tell you, he has never picked up the phone and called me. It's nine o'clock at night, 9.30. My phone rings and I look down and it was the day, it was blackout. Remember the day we did blackout, like yeah. buy black? Uh-huh. And it was oh, that day. Yeah. And I had gone into the restaurant to buy dinner to bring home. And I thought he was calling me to say, thank you for coming into the restaurant. And he said, Frank, you know that thing you do, that inspiration, whatever, whatever. I said, yeah. He said, man, I got I got an inspiration and I got to share because somebody needs to hear what happened to me because Jesus wants somebody to know, like an old school preacher, what happened to me. And I said, OK, you know, uh, Mr. Anthony, go ahead and tell me what happened. And he begins to tell me about something that God asked him to do in the middle of the pandemic. 
and how God came through. And I, I don't have a lot of time here to, to tell you about it, um, but it was so inspirational how God blessed him, and it felt as if, and I asked him what happened after God told you. He said the pandemic hit, and we were down 60%, and I knew I couldn't hold on to the restaurants too much longer, but God asked me to do this. And it was like to invest a lot of money and to buy three acres of land to build a shopping center in the middle of all this. So he's down 60%. God wants him to build a shopping center, but he only wants him to pay this one price. Make a long story short, he goes, he finally gets the price, signs the contract, and all of a sudden the business started going up. He got the property for a third of what it was listed for, and his business to the point where his May numbers were last year's May numbers and his June numbers was record breaking, the best in the history of the restaurant he had ever done for the month of June, broke all records, and they're not even open. They're only open for carry out. Man. Still. And right. they cut two hours off of the restaurant hours every day to save money. In the middle of the pandemic, shutting down two hours early, not having anybody sit in the restaurant. He broke all records because he followed God's voice. Here's the crazy part. He said, Frank, somebody needs to hear this. I want you to tell my story. And I started tearing up and I said, Butch, I'm the person that needed to hear that. Wow. And he said, really? And I said, I can't tell you why, but you called and God wanted you to call me because I needed to hear that tonight. And he said to me, let's pray. And we started praying on the phone. That's how God works, man. If you're in tune to what God wants for your life and you're following his direction, he will put people in your life that will give you confirmation, the things that you were thinking, and they will say them to you, and they will start to give you signs of what the future looks like and what the future is going to have. You get all these confirmations, and then you have to do the hardest thing, and the hardest thing in the Christian faith is faith. And you have to have faith, and you have to step out in faith despite of what the world is saying to you. So the world is saying, Frank, stay your butt at V103 because it's in the middle of a pandemic. You got mm -hmm. a job. Mm -hmm. So many millions of people don't have a job. Mm -hmm. you're, you're paying the bills. Don't leave. Don't do this right now. Wait for the pandemic to be over. Da -da -da -da. Every reason under the sun not to do it. But you know what? When you follow God's voice, sometimes you have to step out and step away from the boat and walk on water.